Hi, and welcome to the Market Alert uh, for Friday, the 23rd of July 2021. So another day of gains as futures trade within 1% of all-time highs. Again, we saw the market moving to the upside, but it was all done and dusted, really, within the first hour for the DEX. Uh, the Dow was a bit of a different uh, animal as it uh, moved lower in the afternoon. But then, as ever, the plunge protection team coming in and moving the markets back to the upside. Uh, the Dow's... Uh, down move or initial down move in the afternoon uh, is shown and reflected in the implied volatility as this was up slightly uh, yesterday from uh, 13 16 to uh, 14 52 so up slightly there but still in that sideways range there at the bottom now today we've got a lot of news 7 a.m we kick off with the uk retail sales that's out as the futures market opens and then we have that uh, one day in the month when we get all of the uh, fresh uh, the the flash uh, news and this is the theme all the way through the morning unfortunately no sooner you're into a trade then there's the prospect of actually being thrown out of it uh, because uh, at the moment PMI numbers are important normally they wouldn't be but uh, at the moment the reflection of uh, the recovery following uh, last year's sort of global uh, shutdown so let's have a look at the Dow it'll be in here somewhere uh, we'll start off with the daily. Uh, we can see we've got some potential weakness there as the market's gone through the 78 but failed so far to get through the 89. The 89 is a very important area. This market needs to get through this if it's to attempt to get through the all-time high. Moving to the upside, uh, above the 20 bar moving average still, so it's got that momentum. The 5 bar is still below the 20 though, uh, which is interesting but uh, certainly needs to move strongly if it's going to take out uh, the uh, 35,000 uh, level there. Yesterday, you can see that uh, in the pre-market on the electronic futures for the Dow market moving uh, sideways to higher there. And then uh, just uh, before lunch, uh, you can see or 12.30 ish the market moving down. And then uh, we see them buying back. And again, you can see that 78% uh, retracement there and then up to uh, back up to the upside again for 89 percent uh, if we just uh, measure that out you'll see that uh, in both directions so uh, we've got uh, from here to here coming back to the 78 89 and then uh, on the upside from here down to here takes you to uh, uh, 89 there as well so again uh, confirming and uh, conforming I should say, to the normal standard uh, movement in the market there. The German DAX, as uh, we look at the daily chart, also moving higher, but uh, not as close to the all-time high as uh, the Dow at the moment. Uh, you'll see that uh, we've got the 78 above, but we stopped at the 20 bar moving average, which uh, is interesting at the moment. As well, we could see a bit of a move to the downside. And just in case we do, let me draw in from this low to yesterday's high some downside uh, fibs there. Just in case if the market doesn't hold above that 62% it went through during uh, yesterday's session, then it could uh, move to the downside. Also in the 30 minute, you can see how the market took off uh, initially, uh, had a, another bit of a move. Uh, in the afternoon and then eventually came down it took a, a moment or two it was a, a very boring afternoon the market just stuck in uh, this uh, sideways move which uh, you'll show you uh, in just a second so yeah just uh, go back to the daily make sure I've covered everything there yeah um, like I say it's going to depend really on the uh, flash news which comes out at 245 will help uh, the uh, the Dow uh, there that's for sure and also uh, the DAX let's have a look at the metals markets I was just undecided where to go then yeah a good article on zero hedge uh, from a trader how I F the markets around a lot uh, Merrill gold traders uh, chat exposes how easy it is to manipulate the metals markets um, well, we've seen that, haven't we, over the last uh, couple of weeks of 130, 230, how prices are pushed lower. But it's only in the paper market, not in the physical market, which is impossible to do. And the demand's still there. Uh, Gold-silver ratio down a bit, uh, so 
silver holding support there at the moment. So let's have a look at uh, this. We've got gold, uh, which is sideways, sitting at a 50% retracement, uh, moving off this yesterday back to the upside. That's because we saw the uh, dollar index uh, move lower, but then came back and is attempting to come back once more. And in silver, we also uh, saw the market move to the upside as well. So I'm expecting a retracement back to uh, sort of 89% in uh, the silver market. So it's been two days of uh, let off the hook there. Uh, but uh, prices always uh, tend to be moved lower first before they are allowed to move back to the upside. And yesterday's uh, trading session, uh, we started off with uh, the market uh, sideways in the futures markets. And then you'll see uh, prices open at uh, 8 a.m. in just a second as they move sharply to the upside. As uh, we move up to that point, so there we go. So yeah, prices moving up uh, sharply straight out of the gate. Uh, up uh, 70 odd points uh, straight to the R1. The market then shows uh, some selling coming into the market with uh, prices uh, slightly weakish and then uh, they return to the upside and break through the uh, BRN and the R1. But don't go much further. I'm just going to wind this back and have a look again. You can see here in this bar we've got more or less the same volume as the previous bar that drove through and yet the market's made no progress there. Again, indicating there's some weakness about. Market comes back down, uh, puts in a sell signal, but watch immediately as we get to this level. Watch the volume now as it uh, builds very, very quickly as uh, they uh, take profits having shaken out. You can see this here, there's the test. And then the market is free to move back to the upside, which it does. Uh, we have a potential buy signal, but uh, prices don't fill within those three bars. And then eventually it moves on and does it after the signals uh, disappeared, which is uh, very frustrating. So we see prices trade through the 89 towards uh, the recent high to the left, which prices then fail. And then move sideways. And then uh, Broadbent was speaking. Uh, he spoke uh, for a good uh, hour yesterday and uh, prices uh, were trading sideways, uh, listening to what he had to say. We had a potential sell signal, which uh, I cancelled because uh, he was speaking. And uh, the market then, I'm just going to fast forward this uh, very quickly, uh, traded in a sideways range. And you'll see what I mean as uh, we step back and have a look at this uh, in just a moment wind this up a bit and you'll see what I mean so you can see there the how quiet it was and this set a precedent really for the afternoon session which I'm going to go back to the uh, DAX chart to, to look at because uh, it was so hot yesterday afternoon uh, the computer that I record on was starting to um, uh, get a tad too warm so uh, there was no uh, recording of yesterday afternoons on the uh, the main computer uh, but you can see it did uh, barely anything yesterday afternoon. It just traded up, traded back, and then got into a bit of a range and then traded sideways. And then uh, overnight uh, prices have been uh, sideways to lower. Currently uh, trading, um, if we move to the 30 minute, it's easier to see. Uh, trading above the DP, uh, struggling at the close, certainly going to struggle at yesterday's high unless it can drive through. And then below this, uh, we've got uh, a bit more on the downside to get to yesterday's low. OK, that uh, will do it for this one as we head into the weekend. Uh, let's uh, hope that the weather continues. Uh, but as ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.